Hello, I'm Brandon with Enlightium Academy. March 17th is what is often commemorated and used to celebrate the feast day of St. Patrick. Now, most of what people have heard or have been told around this time is largely due to legend or tradition. Some of us may have heard that uh, there are no snakes in Ireland because upon his arrival, Patrick sent them all away, or that he famously used a three-leaf clover to explain the Trinity to the Irish. Now, most of this we can't actually validate. They're legends, but like any legend, these things stem from fact. So, St. Patrick, though he is often known to be the patron saint of Ireland, actually wasn't Irish. He was born in what it was Roman-ruled Britain to a Christian family, his father, a deacon. Uh, we know that when St. Patrick was between 14 and 16, he was kidnapped by Irish pirates. His village was ransacked and raided, and he was taken and used as a slave to herd livestock. Uh, while there, uh, Patrick would later recount and write down that it was here in Ireland that he actually experienced God and converted to Christianity. He was, God used his slavery to awaken him to the reality of his spiritual slavery. And not only that, but through his time in Ireland where he would spend the next six years of his life, God awakened him to his literal slavery and led him to feel like he needed to escape. And we're not really sure how he did it, but he did escape and God led him safely back home. When he got back home to Britain, he, he very quickly moved to northern France where he would receive his education and preparation for ministry. And while in school in northern France, he felt this calling of God on his life to return to Ireland to proclaim the gospel to those who had once held him captive. Patrick's life is really an extraordinary picture of the power of the gospel and its change that it can have in a person. Just think through his life with me for a brief moment. As a 14 to 16 year old boy, these pirates kidnap him, take him to a foreign land and force him into labor. And while there, God uses his physical slavery to awaken him to his spiritual slavery, leads him home, leads him to an education, and then calls him into ministry back to those same people who kidnapped him, those same people that held him in slavery. And when we hear the story, we think, why would Patrick go back? What would motivate Patrick to such mission? I think there's at least two reasons, if not more. The first reason is that Patrick had an overwhelming sense of thankfulness to God, and he had a deep understanding and appreciation for the love of God. Patrick, Patrick had firsthandedly experienced salvation for himself, and that drove him to a thankfulness to God. And you and I were the same way. This this thankfulness, this love of God that we have experienced because we have been saved by a supernatural act of the Father sending His Son for us should lead us to proclaim the Savior. So this weekend, Saturday, is, is St. Patrick's Day, and I would invite you to join me in doing two things. One, I would invite you to pray with me for missionaries. If you know of or support missionaries, pray for those people. If you don't know any missionaries or don't support any missionaries, just pray for them in general. Pray for those who are in the field doing the mission's work. Pray that their work would be fruitful. Pray that their witness would be uh, strengthened and that God would use them to awaken people to himself. The second thing I would ask you to do with me would be to just contemplate where you fit in joining in God's mission. Where is it that God could be calling you to participate in this mission of proclaiming the gospel of reconciliation? Uh, I, would, I would invite you in, into reading and meditating through the great commission that Jesus left his apostles and to his disciples. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And remember this, that I am with you always to the end of the age. And I think that last part of what Jesus says in the Great Commission serves as another motivation for us to do missions, for us to be involved in evangelistic efforts. And that is that Jesus Christ, the one who has been given all authority, is with us. There is not a single place that God will call us that he will not go before us 
to prepare the hearts and minds of men and women to receive his gospel. The harvest is ready and the workers are you. So as I conclude and leave you, let me read to you an Irish prayer that is believed to have been written by St. Patrick. May Christ shield me today, Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit, Christ when I stand, Christ in the heart of everyone who thinks of me, Christ in the eyes of everyone who sees me, Christ in the mouth of everyone who speaks of me, Christ in the ears of everyone who hears me. Amen.